Hey everybody and welcome back to the Greg Tech Tutorial Series for Part 7B and this is going to be on the fusion reactor again. Last part we covered the building of the fusion reactor, now we're going to cover the operation of the fusion reactor. This is going to be a very laggy world, so if you're wondering why the FPS dropped it's because I'm on a different world on a different mod pack. This is FTB Unleashed version 1.1.2. With a couple of other mods added in. This is one of my older worlds. Uh, I am currently uh, sitting in my base, which is very laggy. I don't know why this world was so laggy. It just suddenly got laggy. Maybe because I'm doing this on my laptop and it doesn't have a very good graphics processor. Hmm. Wonder why. Uh, Intel HD 4000 graphics cards tend to not deal with large amounts of leaves and moving graphics very well. So that's why. I only do Minecraft. Ah. Uh, I'm using dimensional doors here, so this is a dimensional door. It's interlinked to another point in this world, an old quarry site in the middle of the desert. Um, as a matter of fact, since I do have a jetpack, I will show you where the site is here. It's an old quarry that I dug all the way down to bedrock. I think this was a 40 by 40 quarry. Um, and basically, after I was done with it, I thought, you know where it would be a good place to put a massive industrial complex? Underground! In this perfectly square hole I made. So, after extracting all the resources from it, I layered it with a whole bunch of floors made out of cobblestone, put some wrath lamps in there, light it up, and used it as my fusion reactor complex. So let's go. So here we are in level one of the fusion reactor complex. That's the surface up there. Basically, I've got some wrath lamps here lighting it up. I've got a floor made out of cobblestone that I just made with a filler. And I've got some water streams coming in from the ceiling to act as elevators. And basically, this is a... It, it would be a three-floor complex if it was fully operational. And... How it works is, basically, I've got two sides here. One side processes helium-3, and the other side processes deuterium, because I'm using the helium-3 deuterium reaction. This side processes helium-3, the other side processes deuterium. The deuterium side is a bit more simple. It doesn't mean it's any less difficult to build, it just means it's a bit more simple. Basically, I've got four aqueous accumulators from thermal expansion here. And these have just infinite water sources here. And they just have liquid ducts. They used to be called liquid ducts. They are now called fluid ducts. Uh, over here. And I couldn't quite work out how to do the industrial electrolyzers. Well, turns out industrial electrolyzers can take water directly into them from liquid ducts. So that's no problem. I have industrial electrolyzers. And as far as I can remember... Okay, so apparently force wrenches don't work as IC2 wrenches. Whatever. I think uh, I have a text document here somewhere that tells me uh, fusion reactor automation data. Here we go. Okay, so for the deuterium, you need uh, three electrolyzers with one overclocker upgrade each, which consume HV, so you need a transformer upgrade on them. So basically what I have is I have uh, water coming in here. It's getting electrolyzed. It's getting turned into... Come on. Oh, I forgot how long it takes to look up recipes here. There we go. Water comes in, gets turned into four hydrogen cells and a compressed air cell using 93,000 EU over 38 seconds, consuming 120 EU a tick. So, then that gets fed into these ME import buses here. And then those go into this central ME system here. Then the ME system crafts the compressed air cells back into regular cells and then exports the cells back into the electrolyzers. Then the hydrogen cells get exported into industrial centrifuges here. And you need... Centrifuge is three with three overclocker upgrades each, consuming uh, 393 EU a tick total at, f at HV. So, three industrial centrifuges, three overclocker upgrades each, two transformer upgrades, get them up to HV. 
then you import the hydrogen cells and export everything else. Gives you a, some byproducts of cells and a deuterium cell. Pump the cells back into the industrial electrolyzers. And then put the deuterium cells into liquid transposers. Liquid transposers pump them into liquid ducts. Liquid ducts go into tanks. Tanks ha has an ME fluid import bus on it. This is from the mod Extra Cells. If you don't have this installed, then just pump it right into your storage. I just decided, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a couple of ME 1K fluid storages in here, which can store 256,000 mil buckets of fluid each, and then an ME fluid access terminal. So basically, I can store my fluid and my items in the same ME terminal. Really cool. So this holds gaseous deuterium, 512,000 mil buckets. Then I've got a pipe down here with an ME fluid export bus, which I'll show you in a few minutes, that's pumping it down to my reserve tanks. This is just a Greg Tech auto crafting table that is powered via a hybrid solar panel. Then all of this stuff is powered via Dragon Egg energy siphons in a pocket dimension from Dim Doors, which is then being teleported via Tesseract and turned via an ener energy bridge back into, a into EV, which is then being down transformed using HV transformers back into HV, which is being used to power the centrifuges. Then you've also got a redstone energy cell with magmatic engines attached onto it with a gate that says when it's full I made a redstone signal. So basically this powers these liquid transposers and whenever this cell is full of energy then the magmatic engines will shut off. So that's just the power for that. And then the ME terminal is being powered via another hybrid solar panel and a liquid tesseract with magmatic engines on it. Over on the Helium-3 side, it's a bit more complex. There's an item tesseract here that pumps in UU matter. The UU matter goes into this ME system. Okay, right here. The UU matter then gets auto-crafted via the auto-crafting system that I have down here in the lower floor into redstone. Redstone goes with a tome of alkahest from... Zeno's Reliquary with Endstone to duplicate the Endstone. Endstone gets ground up using rotary macerators from advanced machines. These are level emitters. As long as there is more than 384 Endstone dust in the ME system, it will not emit a redstone signal. If there's less than that, it'll emit a redstone signal and turn on these precision export buses, which will export Endstone into the macerators. There is a uh, ME level limiter here that says if there is less than 384 breadstone in the system, activate the wireless transmitter. The other end of the wireless transmitter is in my UU matter age, where it'll turn on an ME export bus that starts shoving UU matter into this item tesseract. UU matter gets auto crafted into redstone until there's 384 redstone, and then the redstone signal shuts off and stops making redstone. Basically, it means this system will never run out of redstone. The way I auto-craft it is, if there is less than 384 redstone in the system, turn on a redstone signal here. That activates this precision export bus, which is set to craft items. There is a crafting recipe for redstone in the auto-crafting system. Craft 24 redstone for UU matter. Then that'll export redstone into this chest and import it back into the system. Same deal for endstone. Same sort of deal. Just auto crafts it when there's less than, I think, I set that to 384 as well. I picked 384 just because it's a nice number, not too low, not too high. There's no danger of it running out. Then the uh, endstone dust, which is, comes from the rotary macerators, goes into industrial centrifuges. The first set of industrial centrifuges centrifuges the end stone into helium and helium-3. Helium-3 gets exported into here and gets turned from cells into liquid. Or to be more specific, gas. And then the gas gets exported back into the system and it gets stored. 
like so. The helium goes, it gets put into a second set of centrifuges, which centrifuge it into helium-3. The cells that get, by, that get byproduct from that get pushed back into the regular set of centrifuges. The second set of centrifuges isn't getting enough power, because I couldn't work out how to get enough power to the second set of centrifuges. These take an insane amount of power. The second set of centrifuges for the helium-3 takes five, with three overclocker upgrades each, con consuming a total of seven of 655.36 EU a tick. It takes four rotary macer macerators with no upgrades at 7500 RPM, which is their maximum speed. So, it takes quite a lot of equipment for this. So, once all the helium-3 gets pumped into the system here, once the system is full, it exports it into this liquid duct. This is sort of the underbelly of the processing system. Same deal over here, exports it as deuterium. These liquid ducts go all the way down. Here's the ME molecular assembler chamber with the crafting recipes in it. Here's the lava feed from my nether lava harvester for powering the magmatic engines. And here's floor number two. This is where I store all of the gaseous helium-3 and gaseous deuterium. This is a large iron tank holding 5,488,000 millipockets. Normally, if I'd actually got this facility running, which I didn't because I switched to a newer version of the pack before I did, there would be a bottom floor here, or perhaps the reactor would be on the same floor as the storage, that would have the actual reactor itself on it. So the big reactor torus would probably be right about here. And then you'd have feed pipes with pumps coming in from the tanks, feeding in the products. Then you'd have another feed pump from the reactor going back up to the main processing floor. Then there would be a huge tank there with a whole bunch of helium plasma in it. And there's the end of the story. Then you have a bank of plasma generators feeding that into energy storage and so on and so forth. This is just a monitoring screen that tells me what's going on, tells me how much deuterium and helium-3 I have. And there you go. Fusion reactor automation. That's how much stuff you need. Plus all the infrastructure you need to get to lava and so on and so forth. There you go. Fusion reactor 101. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for watching the Greg Tech tutorial series. I hope it was conclusive for you. I hope you learned a lot of stuff about the mod. I hope if you already knew about the mod, then you learned some more stuff about it. So, that's about it for this series. I will be doing some more series uh, soon. And that's it. Thanks for watching.